Hello, everyone. We're live. We're just going to get right into the show today. Hi, Tom. Hi, Allison. This VR is amazing. Yeah, am I? Are we? Are you looking at the hangout in VR in your VR goggles while you're on the hangout? I'm on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> nice. Uh, is Andy there with you? <laughs> Sixteen dollars for that comedic bit right there. Sixteen bucks. Yeah, <laughs> paid off. All right. Uh, hey, I. Yes, sir. I don't know. Is uh, the video jerky for anyone else, or is it just me? Like it's super it's jerky. Me. I'm very jerky. <laughs> uh, I might have to pop out and pop back in real quick. Okay, I'll keep an eye out and give you give you the the thing again. All right, you guys ready? Mm. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Here we go. My fellow citizens of the internet, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. So go show fear you mean business. Go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support and show them you're not interested in fear. You're interested in the future. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today, uh, Allison Sheraton, Nozilla Cast, is uh, back, and I'm not at her house. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for letting me borrow your internet last Monday. You saved the show. I like what Zoe said in the uh, chat room, said, oh, look, Allison's in Tom's backup studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, though, that some people were saying it was nice of me to use a picture of your studio on my green screen. <laughs> All the jokes. Uh, but excited also today to have Andy Anatko from the Chicago Sun-Times with us. Andy, thank you for doing this, man. Hello. It's nice to be back my own self. <laughs> it is good to have you back. It has it's been nice way to too be long. looking at your, as your, at your winsome green screen as again. <laughs> yes. Enjoy everything we have. Uh, Amazon's got a uh, bunch of news for us today, so we're going to talk about that uh, in the headlines and a little bit in depth. So let's start with those headlines. Amazon launched Amazon Video Direct today. Creators must fill out tax information and link a bank account, plus create pages for their series and provide artwork for display. So this ain't no YouTube shoot it on your iPhone thing. Uh, they can choose to include shows in Amazon Prime, streamed free with ads. You can rent your stuff. You can sell your stuff. Any combination of those you want. Amazon Video is available in Japan, the UK, Austria, Germany, and the United States. Variety reports Amazon will pay creators 50% of retail if they sell or rent it and 55% of revenue gained from an ad-supported stream. Uh, if you go to Amazon Prime, you get 15 cents per hour oh, in the U.S., 6 cents per hour streamed elsewhere. That is capped at $75,000 a year. And in addition to that, the top 100 titles will get paid a monthly bonus uh, divided up out of a pool of a million dollars. We're going to talk about this in the main discussion, but uh, quick impressions, Andy and Allison, what do you think? Well, are we going to get cat videos there or not? That's going to be the crucial thing, right? They're going to be expensive cat videos, right, Andy? I <laughs> uh, don't know if they're going to be creating their own free studio or tapping in any way into everything that makes YouTube interesting. But they seem to be doing it differently, and so that's, that's a, there's a reason for it to exist. Yeah, it kind of feels like the Kindle program to me. I'll explain that a little more. Yeah. Uh, drop, go ahead. Tell me about Dropbox, Allison. <laughs> Dropbox announced the launch of Dropbox Education on Tuesday. It comes with pooled storage of 15 gigabytes per user, unlimited version history going back one year, and the ability to control sharing permissions for admins. The service costs $49 per user per year, which is about a third of what you would pay for the business version, But the, and there's also uh, volume discounts available. Dropbox already had 4,000 educational organizations on board with its other offerings prior to the launch. That's kind yeah. of interesting. It, it is interesting to see Dropbox tailor this. They, they've been very insistent to say we are only going to have, you know, uh, individual business and enterprise. That's it. And we'll, we'll make that work for anybody. Uh, so this is the first time they've tailored it to a particular industry. I like the, the pooled storage too. So 15 gigabytes per user, but you pile it all together and everybody yeah. gets an average of that. So that can really make that be valuable. Although if you're in business, if you're in a business account, you get unlimited storage. So it, and, it is a step down from that. And you do get unlimited uh, the history. And I think the history drops off after about a year here. 
The U.S. FCC and FTC issued statements Monday requesting more information on how mobile phones receive security patches. The FCC is concerned about delays or patches never being issued for older devices. The FCC sent letters to AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, and TrackPhone. And then the FTC sent its letters to the manufacturers, Apple, Google, BlackBerry, HTC, LG, Microsoft, Motorola, and Samsung. Companies must detail the security history of the models offered for sale since August 2013. Uh, and Andy, they're, they're basically trying to say, we, we think you leave a lot of losers, user, users behind, a bunch of losers. Yeah, and it's not just leaving users behind, it's also leaving us, leaving the entire network vulnerable uh, because these it's, it's not just getting a new search feature or getting a better camera. If you don't, if you do not have a, if, if, every time that the FBI finds a way to crack into someone's phone, they are the last person in line after a thousand bad people have figured that out as well. So it's really not, it's, it's you're, 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 you have to, there is such a thing as end of life for a device, but you are required to make sure that if someone drives this car for 12 years, their brakes still work and that's basically what the FCC is requiring right now. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of too, Andy, was FTC and the FCC over here and the FBI over here going, hey, look what we got here. We got a treasure trove and these guys going, well, maybe not. We don't think that's the best idea. I, oh, yeah, this just thrilled me. Not a good idea. Well, and I thought it was interesting. They said, what vulnerabilities have been discovered by anyone that you know of and have you patched them? <laughs> uh, which you th that should not be a hard question, but there may be unpatched vulnerabilities out here. Now, granted, they're only making them go back to August 2013. I think you'd see a lot more vulnerabilities unpatched if you made them go back five, six years. And specifically going back to older models that maybe aren't allowed to get it, I, and, uh, and yeah. including AT&T and Verizon, uh, yeah. T-Mobile and Sprint, that, that, this just thrills me. Well, Microsoft announced it will shut down MSN China on June 7th. MSN China was launched 11 years ago in partnership with Shanghai Alliance Investment. The service has been falling behind other companies like Tencent, Sino Weibo, and Baidu. MSN Messenger closed two years ago. Yeah, I think a lot of people may look at this headline and misinterpret it as Microsoft pulling out of China when they're doing quite the opposite. It's it's just Microsoft's content arm in China not being able to keep up with the whatever the Chinese Joneses are. <laughs> Uh, Tom Stocky, VP of Search at Facebook, posted a response to Gizmodo's story about suppression of political stories by curators of Facebook's Trending Stories module. This is what we talked with Veronica about yesterday. Uh, he reiterated that Facebook guidelines require the acceptance of any real-world topic. He says, we only, look, we only get rid of stuff if it's not real world. Uh, so we get rid of duplicates, of course, but we also get rid of hoaxes, subjects with insufficient sources where they're not sure whether it's real or not. And if you violate the guidelines by getting rid of stuff you just don't like, it's a fireable offense. He also denied that Facebook injects stories into the trending topics box that aren't yet trending. He says, no, we they, they are trending. Black Lives Matter was trending. Syria was trending, uh, which were the two that were mentioned in the Gizmodo story. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg asking several questions, including some about organizational structure, whether content had been manipulated, details of what Facebook investigated, uh, which uh, Stocky said they had done, and when those guidelines were put in place and what those guidelines are. So we're already we're already getting a, a, a Senate inquiry in here. And 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 Andy, I know I know this is something that's uh, very of interest to you as well. Yeah, it's 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 interesting that we're get, we for a century or two we've had this uh, this standard thing where. If you've got two or three papers in the city, one of them will have a. They each have their own point of view and their own opinion on what's important, what's not. They might even have their own political slant uh, or slant towards or against. And now we're finally seeing a thing where uh, Facebook and, and et al. are being expected to to live to a better standard. But the reason why is that people don't think that they're going to uh, the Boston Globe. They think they're going to the newsstand. And if that's the only place where they're getting a, a mishmash of news that they believe is being curated by robots, they're just looking for velocity and popularity, they can get a very skewed idea of, uh, of what the news is. That said, it's really important that you have some sort of human oversight over these things because you can't simply say that just because a million people have been forwarding an article uh, about uh, how autism is caused by vaccines, that doesn't mean that that's a verifiable, sourced, good piece of journalism. You should actually have someone there to say, no, I'm not going to let this. I'm not going to let this be part of the curated news feed because this is garbage. Uh, so oftentimes, if you're upset that a certain news item has not been talked about everywhere, it's because you are trying to get people to read garbage. 
Yeah. I mean, if Python eats an elephant is the most shared story on Facebook, I bet they don't let it go into trending stories anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, unless they can verify that the Python ate the elephant. Right. And, and you've got <laughs> credible sources reporting on it, et, et cetera. I, I think they would have avoided some trouble if they'd been a little more transparent about the curation and maybe not called it trending stories, which really makes people think like, oh, this is a direct algorithm with no, it, 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 no, no insertion of the human in the process. Because it's not, like you say, it's not bad to have a human curate this and, and sort of clean it up for people. Yeah, and, and even a lot of us may not really approve of Fox News, but I'm I perfectly uh, approve of a news outlet deciding that we are going to be front and center saying this is our attitude towards the news. So long as it does what it says on the outside of the box, that's perfectly okay. And I think that's what Tom said yesterday too, was that as long as you tell me it's curated and, and that you've, or Maybe you've even got it, your yeah. opinion put in, that's what matters, right? Don't pretend you're unbiased. I, I think personally the most amazing part of that story is that a Senate uh, Commerce Committee got their act together enough to write a letter in less than 24 hours. That's <laughs> kind of impressive, actually. Yeah, when you hit at your party, uh, it really motivates you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Xiaomi launched the 6.44-inch MyMax today in China, the size uh, basically of a four-day-old baby hedgehog. It weighs 203 grams, and the 1080p display has a curved glass front. It has a battery that's 4,850 milliamp hours, which I think is longer, would stay awake longer than a 40-year-old baby hedgehog. It can do 14 hours of streaming video on Wi-Fi. It goes on sale in China May 17th, starting at RMB 1699, that's $230 US, and going up to RMB 1999 for $306 US. So everybody's getting smaller except Xiaomi, who's, who's getting maxed out. 6.44 inches. I think the Xperia Z Ultra was the last one that was that big, or close to that big anyway. Uber has launched Uber Wave, its wheelchair accessible service in London. Uber Wave cars are equipped with a rear entry ramp, winch, and appropriate restraints. The cost is the same as UberX and can be booked anywhere in Greater London. Uber says that Uber Wave drivers will have received disability equality training from Transport for All and Inclusion London. That's a quote. Uber Wave is currently available in Toronto, Sydney, and more than 10 U.S. cities, including L.A., Chicago, and Washington. That's pretty cool. It's, nice. it's better than cool. That's it, it, absolutely important. Uh, accessibility has to be universal or else it, it's meaningless. And the ability of someone who, a person with a physical disability, being able to simply activate an app on their phone and use the same infrastructure as anybody else and also get a ride picked up from the, after the end of a day at a club back to their apartment uh, is, uh, is just a, an important critical piece of infrastructure that we should be, uh, that should be applied everywhere. And something that you can't just say, okay, all Uber drivers pick up wheelchair people. They do need to be trained properly. Right. And so you, good for Uber in going through the motions to make this happen and make people trained and available. That's great. Along the same lines, London design firm Layer, ha Layer has a new prototype wheelchair design called Go. Fast Company says it'll be unveiled during the Clerkenwell Design Week in London. Manufacturers would scan a person and 3D print seats and footrests to match that person's seat and feet, accounting for size and weight. Layer estimates it would take about two weeks to complete a custom wheelchair. Now, I've got a technical friend who is really measured and understands a lot about wheelchairs, so I shot him this note, gave him 30 seconds to give me an answer on whether this sounded good, and he said for certain types of paraplegics, this would be fantastic, but he'd have, have a lot of questions, like what sort of provisions do they have for people that need to hire a wheelchair, back arms on the wheelchair, foot straps, et cetera? How, do, how would they integrate that? What sort of service guarantee do they have? What, what about on-site service and, and replacement parts? So it's not just about making that seat, which could be good for some, but having the entire infrastructure behind it is something that's really critical for using a wheelchair. Those are great points. And, and what Layer's doing is saying, we've developed a system to customize that seat, provide a better center, center of gravity so it doesn't tip over as much, uh, make, make the feet uh, more not just more comfortable but more stable, and it would work with existing wheelchair infrastructure. So therefore, a wheelchair company that wanted to take advantage of Layer's design should be able to do all those things. But well, that's you, you they they that the, the devil's in the details right like no manufacturer has yet uh caught on to this because again it is just a prototype my brother is the uh coach of the wheelchair basketball team for uh the united states actually competing at invictus uh in the finals on thursday and uh I listen to him talk about working on these wheelchairs. He is always like tearing a strap off of his backpack and, and tying something together. So repair and maintainability is definitely a crucial piece of this. 
And as I understand it, the wheelchairs usually take much more than two weeks to turn around. So, so these parts uh, would be able to, to fit right into the process. Yeah. The Globe and Mail reports Canada's major banks have finally reached a deal on Apple Pay. Royal Bank of Canada and Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce will let customers use Apple Pay with credit and debit cards starting Tuesday for purchases less than $100. ATB Financial and Canadian Tire Financial Services will offer the service, but only for credit cards, not for debit. And Bank of Montreal, Toronto Dominion Bank and Bank of Nova Scotia will roll out support over the coming months. So they're not jumping in right away, but they'll get there eventually. Uh, that $100 max, though, I, I would never be using that. Well, not so, never. But I would worry about using that for grocery shopping because I guess I'm mostly under $100, but occasionally I go over and then I'd be like, oh, crap, I have to carry my card all the time anyway, just in case. My friend Stephen Getz texted me this morning from Canada saying, woohoo, got to use Apple Pay and got to use his debit card. He said that they use debit cards like three to one uh, versus credit cards. Oh, really? So apparently that's a that's a big deal. Do you ever go to Canada, Andy? Never been once, unfortunately. I, I was expecting you to say just not very often. You've never actually been once. That's amazing. I have envied it when I've written checks to healthcare providers. I have never actually stepped foot in Canada. No kidding. Huh. Hmm. Well, now you have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Take Apple if, Pay across if, the board. If things go the wrong way after the election, I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> let away that I can still use my Apple Watch. Yep. I'm not sure they can go the right way. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, well, it can go. It can go a very wrong way. I uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to politicize mean. this, right. but I no, I know. <laughs> So hard not to have this conversation. All right, VentureBeat reports that its sources say the images for Moto X leaked yesterday by EvLeaks and Hello Moto HK were of two versions of the Moto X called the Vertex and Vector Thin. Both models will have different internal specs, but both allegedly support swappable magnetic backplate modules called AMPs. Among the six expected modules are stereo speakers, battery pack, camera flash, an optical zoom, and a Pico projector, and a rugged cover with a wide-angle lens. I think this is really cool. The headline, I think, says uh, something about uh, modular done right, and this is I think that's a terrific idea. So you don't carry that junk around all the time, but you can add it on. Yeah, absolutely. And the way they've done it is very, very smart. Where uh, You can have a situation where people who take this out of the box will never know that those Pogo plugs exist because they just have the, they ordered the one with the red cover on it. The red cover is, is on it. It's flush with the camera lens. It looks okay. But then maybe a year from now, they will decide that they want extra battery. And while they're searching for an external battery pack, they realize, oh, wait, I can just buy an extra an extra cover that it does this different thing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to if they do things that are as interesting as not just a snap-on camera lens, but actually a better image sensor uh, that will just feed the uh, feed the raw data from this essentially self-contained Sony 20 megapixel uh, camera cover, uh, and actually just feed that into the existing Android uh, camera infrastructure. Uh, it's this definitely the sort of thing where they're going to have to just decide that whether there is a tiny, tiny absorption in the first year or not. We just have to put those same plugs on every device we ever make and just trust that people will find it uh, and, and companies will find it over the next two or three years uh, because there's so many of these solutions where uh, it's it's a really great idea, and you saw the two devices that were available at rollout, and that's what, that's all that were ever made for it. But uh, I like to see this sort of ambition uh, in, a, in a phone design. Yeah, I'm curious what the rollout of modules would be, whether they, they'd start to license third parties to do them, because all of these are made by Motorola, at least at launch. That's the expectation here. Uh, but I, I love that idea. I love that idea yep. of just being able to pull something off. And magnetic is perfect. I don't have to deal with plastic levers and snaps or anything. Just swap that thing back and forth. It should be pretty stable. I think uh, you've got a good point, Andy, on the uh, uh, on trying to have this be available for everybody. But I think HTC came out with a completely different design, right? They came out with a slider yeah. thing that, to do it. Yeah. That yeah, seems a lot clumsier than the magnet. Because it also it's it re it requires a phone of this specific uh, form and size. Whereas if they just if Motorola and Moto just has a space exactly that same size anywhere on future phones, they can really make that on tablets, small phones, large phones. Uh, so long as oh, people, right, as, long right. as, as long as it's the same uh, hardware design, and they don't change that from year to year, it could be like uh, like Apple standardizing their dock connector, where they just simply say, as long as you submit your hardware to us, we'll give you a, a made for iPhone or made for iPod sticker, and you're good to go. If it's not going to be in the first year, but it really does require a couple of years for engineers to realize this is a market they want to get into and then perfect, perfect the design. So so long as they stick with it, just don't abandon it in the first year. Or if that first phone is a six and a half inch screen or something, and yeah. then you've got littler phones, so it's this big thing hanging on the back. 
<laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, the, phone, the phones have been getting smaller lately again, but I, I think they'll hover around the same area. So, uh, Moderators of Reddit's technology subreddit have asked for feedback to the idea of banning links to sites that block ad blockers. So Wired and Forbes are the ones they're using as an as example, and those are the ones most commonly posted. Uh, the mods note that Forbes has, in fact, served malware from its site in the past, not on purpose, but they, you know, they, they were victim of that sort of thing, uh, and the ads were the vector, so therefore blocking ad blockers could be considered a security risk. If you're saying, look, I got malware from Forbes one time, I know it was by accident, but I'm blocking those scripts, and yet that means Forbes won't let me read their articles. Uh, ad block detection often blocks stories from browsers with security extensions. Even if you're not running an ad blocker, no script, privacy badger, sometimes those will trigger the ad block detection and prevent you from being able to read this. It, it, it's an interesting question, and don't forget, the moderators are not saying we're going to do this. The mods are saying, what do you think? This this is somewhat of a security risk for some people. Do you think we should do this? Yeah, that that's very, very smart. I, I think it comes down to uh, when you click a link, do you expect to actually be able to get to the content? Uh, and although I think that Forbes et al. are they're doing exactly what they should be allowed to do, which is to decide their own destiny. It's okay also for a public forum to decide that if we can't guarantee that someone will be able to actually see this article that's being posted, we'd much rather save our users the bother. Uh, but uh, I'd, it, it could have a chilling effect if this, uh, if uh, ad blockers, excuse me, ad blocker blocker. I had to, I really <laughs> did have to parse that sentence in that yeah, headline a couple of times to make sure I understood it. But yeah, it could, it could have a chilling effect if uh, blocking ad blockers becomes the norm. Uh, and then it, the result will be people saying, well, what if we just simply copy paste the content of the article uh, into this this blo this post instead? So, oh well. So, Andy, you bring up a good point. Does uh, Reddit allow links to articles that are behind paywalls? I believe well, so. Some I, subreddits do, some don't. And yeah. they okay. actually mention that in their post. They're saying, we're also considering whether we should allow Wall Street Journal articles because they're behind That's a paywall. That's what I thought of. Yeah. Uh, and I, I myself often will not link directly to a Wall Street Journal article from my show notes because I know that a lot of people aren't going to be able to read it. So I figure if I give, you know, Engadget or Verge's write-up, they'll be able to at least read some of the content and still get the link to the original Wall Street Journal article. Um, <laughs> well, see, even, there's, even that, there's a sort of a... It, it's always some, a moral issue because I also have a problem when I... I I'm, I'm actually kind of angry when I've, uh, I'm linked to an article that is really good and factual, then I realize that, oh, this quote author, unquote, just simply copy-pasted paragraph after paragraph of someone else's original reporting that might have taken them a lot of time and money to develop, and now they're getting the link, they're getting the clicks instead. And so if Wall Street Journal is paying somebody enough money to actually go to Singapore and get this information or get this interview, maybe the Wall Street Journal is entitled to their $2.80 or however much money they're, weak they're, they're asking for. So it just goes to show there's no one easy answer to all this. We're yeah, I mean, so. and it's a fair point. If it's a Wall Street Journal digits blog post, there's no problem, right? Because it's not behind the paywall. But when it's behind the paywall, it's like, well, do you explain to people that they can cut and paste or just pay for the subscription yeah. or whatever? Uh, so yeah, there's, there's no good solution these days uh, to that sort of thing. Although, uh, on our own subreddit, it was Albatuela Condolce who submitted this story, and it was someone else. Uh, oh, yeah. CDN Dude 74 said when he gets to a Wired or Forbes article, uh, he just clicks the reader view option that Firefox provides and goes to the readable version and never gets blocked, <laughs> yeah. even though he's running no script. So that's the <laughs> other thing. There's always ways around this stuff if you really look Hard that's oddly enough, that, oddly enough that's that's fine with me too because I feel as though if there's if there's a big gate out in the front with the, they got security guards and turnstiles that that make sure you pay your ten dollars to get in but you've also had a big double wide gate at the back that no one's watching I think it's kind of your responsibility to make sure that gate is closed as well yeah. so if there's a button if there's a visible button in the browser I can click to get it for free. I don't feel quite so guilty. I feel like I'm getting away with something, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't run any actual ad blockers, but I have run into problems with Privacy Badger, uh, yeah. particularly because it's supposed to just be blocking cookies uh, and stop me from being tracked. And I'm like, it's fine if you give me an ad, but I haven't opted into being tracked, so don't right. block me from reading. And I finally figured out in Wired which of their CDNs I needed to move to say no cookies 
but otherwise load and stopped them from yeah. blocking me. I yeah. hadn't figured that one out. I, 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 I would love that if the, if the companies just simply said, here are what, here are the non-negotiable trackers and cookies that we require you to use in order to get our content for free. I'm certainly not, I'm not, well, uh, ghostery for me is, uh, not, is non-negotiable. I have to run ghostery on all my, on all my sites. And, but if you were to tell me that here is two different cookies that you have, that you have to let me, let me uh, activate and that I can see, okay, what are these two companies doing? What's their reputation and what are they yeah, selling yeah. on me? I might consider doing that. I hate to, I hate to say that uh, I have not read Forbes. I've not read Wired in quite a while, despite how good their reporting is because uh, and it's because I'm just not comfortable saying I will whitelist your site. And I haven't yet decided that I can spend an extra $40 a month to buy subscriptions to every single site and blog that I really, really like. Yeah. I'm, I, it's wired that I had to stop reading. I just, on the iPad, it's just unreadable. It's, it's, it's I can't read it. And I loved wired. I loved it. No, they've got, the, the writers are fantastic. They have excellent yeah. content. Uh, finally, a couple uh, quick notes. Uber has agreed to work with the International Association of Machinists to launch an independent guild for Uber drivers. That's part of that New York settlement. Or, uh, it's part of a new a New York settlement, not that New York settlement. And Tumblr uh, launched labs at tumblr.com slash settings slash labs for users to test out experimental features. So if you're into experimental features, you might want to check that out. Big thanks to everybody on our subreddit who submits stuff and helps us put together our lineup every day. Get in there and if not submit stuff, vote on the things that have been submitted. Uh, Loki Robert is in there. Kevwell is in there. Another Jay Martin, Trillion Lover, a bunch of other folks. Join them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. And that is a look at the headlines. All right, so let's talk about Amazon Video Direct. Uh, Prime Video subscribers uh, can can get this stuff. You basically everyone's saying, "Oh, it's like YouTube now. Everyone can publish to Amazon Video." But I went in there to sign up. You have to link, hook up a bank account. You have to fill out a W nine. Give me either your social security number or your federal employee ID number. Uh, your videos require artwork in in the particular spec so that they look good in Amazon's apps and they require captioning and good for them for doing that. But that's not something that like I couldn't immediately put DTNS up there because the captioning I have on YouTube wasn't done yet. And also, I'm not sure that that would pass muster anyway, because it's just the automatic captioning on YouTube. So I don't get the sense that this is directed solely at YouTube. They're not going for that low end cat video market. Uh, but it is very similar to me to the Kindle, where they say, well, we're going to have our own imprint, like Amazon Originals. We're going to have our own Kindle imprint, but we're also going to allow anybody to publish on the platform as long as they meet certain standards of publication. Uh, and, and we'll be able to use that to get a lot more people interested in our product. It certainly does imply that they're looking to get to something more like studio product than homebrew, like cable TV, uh, local cable access uh, product. Um, if the implications that you're going to is willing someone who is willing to uh, file all the paperwork necessary to get stuff on Amazon, but they know that they are guaranteed to get it on Amazon. That's at least one level above being like Louis C.K. and raising six million dollars and having uh, forming your own distribution network or d uh, developing a deal with Netflix or Hulu or one of the other uh, uh, major tier streaming players. Uh, so I would expect uh, I would certainly expect a higher level of production as a user. Uh, I would certainly expect to have good synopses. I would certainly expect it to be compliant with uh, uh, with people who uh, have disabilities. Uh, and I would hope for, especially if I'm paying money to get this, they've said there are, what, six different ways you can list it, including rentals, including actually uh, having people pay for it. Uh, if, so long as they come through with that, I'm not sure how well they could do that without having some level of human cre uh, curation, at least someone keeping an eye on this and saying that, okay, this is not just some person who's holding up like a, second generation iPhone and saying, okay, I'm pouring the water on the sodium and let's see what happens. <laughs> ah, my eyes, my eyes. Actually, that might be a good show. But, uh, good this, TV. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, I, hope it, I hope it plays to the strengths of Amazon, which is get me people who are really interested in not having to uh, convince somebody in an office in a suit this creative idea is a good idea, but they're willing to put the effort into making something that's a commercially uh, viable idea. Uh, and let YouTube still be the one that if there's just some kid who wants to talk for eight minutes about these new headphones they got, or someone who, God forbid, wants to put up a 40-year-old uh, dance video that nobody knows who owns it, but someone does, but no one has the motivation to actually secure the rights and improve it and monetize it, but 
what's the alternative that this 40 year old dance video dies and no one ever gets to see it I, I I would love it if the, if it does fill that specific void as opposed to attempting to take some business away from YouTube. Well, Andy, have you seen anything in the news releases that actually says that they are going to try to curate it and not allow the kid with the sodium and the uh, and the iPhone? Nope, nothing at all. Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm I'm curious to see how well that works. Again. Uh, there are so many shows that I would pay for, and I do pay for them on YouTube, uh, usually via a Patreon, uh, because uh, there's just shows that I look forward to far more than I look forward to any, literally anything that's airing on NBC. Uh, anytime that uh, the xrobots.co.uk guy has a new section of his uh, Iron Man uh, Hulkbuster suit or his BB-8 <laughs> robot build, I mean that's I, I I joined that Patreon like after two months saying that I, it's a really good day when a new episode of his YouTube channel actually appears. Um, however, if uh, some of, a lot of these other things where if I decided to pay, well, actually, you know what, I really do need to know how to fix uh, the motor coupling on this washing machine, and here is a 10-minute, what purports to be a 10-minute how-to video that explains everything how to do it, and so, okay, I'll give you $5, because that'll be cheaper than buying a book or having a plumber come in, and then I find out that it's just a guy who just is describing the, uh, intellectually how this would work, and he's never showing actually what he's doing, but he's just saying, okay, so you just got to make sure you empty it out first, and... Uh, hose, oh, hose clamps. You have to make sure you release hose clamps. I'm like, I spent five dollars for nothing. So I, I I'm wondering you how well. You can watch the ad version, right? Yeah, you can watch you watch the ad version too. But a lot of people are gonna. I wonder how many people who are gonna be posting video there are gonna say, "Wow, you mean that I get money every time someone watches this? This is exactly what I want." As opposed to, I will get a fraction of a penny every time that maybe ads come in. Uh, it's 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 a lot. There's a lot to be discovered that really can only be proven once they actually start doing this. I will say that I saw a list of their ama their amazing partners uh, at launch, and none of them impressed me as something. Wow, an entire channel based on this lifestyle magazine. No, no, thank you. No. What about Mattel? Mattel's a partner. How it's stuff works. Good toy videos. Yeah, how stuff works. I know some good people over there, like Jonathan Strickland. Uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. Like this isn't. This isn't Beth Soloway or, or Jill Soloway, sorry. Uh, this is, um, you know, it, to me, this is Amazon taking a middle ground, saying we've we've done this with books. We have our Amazon originals and they're doing well. What's another way to get people into the tent without having to go to all the trouble that YouTube has to do with content ID, et cetera? Yeah. So they've got a big speed bump in there. And I, I think you're asking a very interesting question, Andy, which is how many people will still drive through that speed bump of like, yeah, sure, I'll give you my social security number, no problem. I've, I'm, I know how to make artwork in, in, in my, uh, my Photoshop. I'm in. I will do captioning. I mean, captioning is probably the, the biggest sticking point here. That's but a big robot. You can get yeah. it done. And and then what will we see? And I and I guess Amazon's willing to open up to that much risk to say, yeah, oh, there'll there'll be some stuff on there that won't be that great, uh, but it, it probably won't. You know, it, yeah. it won't get discovered enough, so it's fine. I do see some things that are an obvious, really good fit for this stuff. There's so many people who actually want to produce their own short movie or even a full length movie, and they can raise a hundred thousand dollars and both to, to advance their own careers and also because they just rather than buy a sports car to say, satisfy the midlife crisis, they want to have this script that they wrote 10 years ago, beat it into shape and actually shoot it uh, professionally. And then you can have this hour long piece of entertainment that really isn't suitable for YouTube uh, and would be kind of heartbreaking if you just simply put it on Vimeo and didn't get any money for it. Uh, but the ability to simply say this is a real thing, it's real in the sense that I'm, I'm expecting it to have a really good presentation and I'm expecting people to actually pay for it. That's when you start to see the, 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 the David Lynch's of the 21st century just come out of everywhere. And that's, that, that, that would bring me to this new Amazon video venture to see the next David Lynch. And I, and I think you're also uh, going to get a lot of people who are on the YouTube platform right now, maybe skeptical of Vessel or not doing great with Vessel, a uh, little more skeptical of MCNs or haven't been picked up by a big full screen or somebody like that. Look at this as another way to say, well, I don't have to shut down my YouTube channel. I can keep that audience. And instead of being exclusive, I'll go to Amazon. And this is another way for me to monetize things. So one thing I was thinking, did they talk at all about the video uh, creation tools? Is it going to be that you have there to create it and upload it yourself? Yeah, and you have to upload it to their spec. It has to be the, the proper spec, uh, and they, they've got that all lined out there. Um, 
and cer certain things will get you into the free tier, but if you want to be in the Amazon Prime tier, you have to you have to meet certain resolution levels because they want it to be HD because everybody yeah. expects it to be. Uh, so yeah, this is this is not this is just a, a way for them to say, hey, if you're not uh, if you don't have a contract with Amazon Originals, but you've got some high quality stuff, here's an easier way to get it on our platform. Yeah, it's it's always it's the 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 transformative nature of being a creative person is the ability to put something in front of an audience without having to convince anybody else that that thing is a good idea. And I would hate to see this idea of independent self-produced video uh, get so successful that unless you are uh, have a deal with a company that is partly owned by NBC Universal, you are not going to get the sort of exposure and you're not going to get the sort of attention uh, that anybody who has managed to strike a deal with NBC Universal has. So if it's someone wants to spend, again, 100000 bucks of their own money to make a really good uh, movie with real equipment and real actors, and I just love the fact that you've got all your skin in the game, it's there because you decided that this exists and you're willing to actually sacrifice to make this happen, and then... Maybe we'll get a few hits out of it, and maybe that person will then be uh, to be directing uh, the Avengers 23, which will be released in about four years from now with the rate that they're releasing movies. Yeah, uh, right. But we we need we need this sort of incubator where people can just express bizarre ideas because that's the only way we're going to push creativity forward. I think you're right. I, I like the idea that under any circumstance, this is going to be good, right? There's gonna, whatever comes out of this is going to be somebody who's committed to trying to create some quality content, not just the cat video. I mean, I've I got nothing against cat or videos. high quality right, right. cat videos, not just the cat yeah, walking he, over to the do, to the dog bowl accidentally anymore. <laughs> got to be better than that. And and even and even terrible videos uh, point to how good this uh, the, the the system is. That someone just I, I, I always I always think back to the Patton Oswalt uh, bit about how we came across this horrible movie called the Death uh, Deathbed the Bed that Eats People. <laughs> and how he use, how he he's always inspired by the fact that he's always putting things he's got like deals to write screenplays for other and he's always being distracted by this that and the other and he has to says that he has to be inspired by the guy who's a even the guy who had the idea for deathbed he said no I am not going to be distracted I'm going to finish this screenplay I'm going to get this movie made so the fact that even deathbed the bed that eats people will get in front of an audience as horrible as it is means that the, again the people who are going to make a movie that. Uh, that maybe is a little bit more mainstream. Is definitely going to get in there. And even if even if it's just a movie that only four people will be glad that they spend fifteen dollars a piece for, those four people are going to be really really glad there was this channel for them to uh, uh, to distribute on. First movie I'm going to look for on this on this platform, <laughs> Deathbed, the bed that eats people. Uh, let's get to our pick of the day, which is another way to watch uh, TV. Holger in Houston said, when you guys talk about cord cutting, I never hear you mention Tableau TV at TableauTV.com. I used Windows Media Center for years, but some time ago switched to Tableau with a lifetime subscription to their guide service, and I can connect from mobile dev devices, browser, Roku, and soon Apple TV. Uh, I used Tableau TV back in their first generation, and it was a little slow and a little janky, but I understand that it's been improved since then. I think the one thing that puts people off Tableau TV is you have to bring your own USB drive. It doesn't come with a hard drive. So when you go to Amazon and search on it, you'll see this item often bought with Western Digital, you know, terabyte drives, uh, but does allow you to swap that drive out and upgrade it as storage gets bigger. So it's an interesting way to get your over-the-air TV available all through your house because you just put it where the reception is best, and then it uses your network to send all of your recordings and your live channels to whatever device you've got. So check it out. TableauTV.com. Thank you, Holger. Send your picks to us, folks. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. You can find more picks at DailyTechNewsShow.com slash picks. Uh, right before we get to our messages of the day, Allison, you had a thought relating to the fact that Apple is not going to be allowed to sell iPhones uh, used, the refurbished iPhones, in India. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion about what that really means. And part of what the Indian government had said was that they wanted things made in India. And we went to India last year, and we were taken on a tour of a jute factory, and it was like being suddenly dropped into the 1920s before unions decided there should be safety for human beings. I mean, it was a horrific environment. With you know, It was loud, and the, the dust level was just insane. I mean, they gave us ear protection, but nobody working there was. It was just this horrible, horrible factory with people working 24-7. They had three shifts of eight hours. And uh, the, the guide explained to us that this is a completely inefficient factory. It costs far, far more than they could easily automate it for, but the government made the decision to employ the people instead. 
And uh, yeah, the, Tom's showing some pictures to the video audience of what it looked like. That's a, a picture of the uh, sewing machine just covered with jute. jute. <laughs> but uh, but it was it was so interesting because it was clear that that the employment of their people was far more important than the efficiency of that, which I was a little worried about how you ever become a uh, first world country if that's the way you work. But on the other hand, they have the option with a company like Apple saying, well, let's put all this this used stuff. They can say, well, no, how about you build a factory here where we can employ some people? That can be a really good thing for India and, and do far more than letting people have the new cool hotness or the old cool hotness. Big Jim uh, in the chat room says India has some of the highest duty rates in the world. So it's it's the way they uh, they approach their economy. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of interesting. But you can find to use BlackBerry there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Severin in sunny Berlin, Germany says, I have a question for the whole DTNS crowd. I use a BlackBerry smartphone. Does anybody know how many of us are still around? <laughs> Some years ago when I was still at university, I'd frequently see other people using Blackberries. Today, I find myself being probably alone with the last other BlackBerry device seen last year and noticing that Facebook dropped its BlackBerry 10 support in March. WhatsApp will do so in 2017. I'm wondering how many of us Blackberries are still left. I saw one at CES. Ah. I took a picture of this guy from behind. Yeah. <laughs> so there's two of you. <laughs> Oh, I can I can beat that. I saw somebody in the public uh, Boston Public Garden a couple months ago taking a picture with a BlackBerry tablet. Oh, oh and I wanted to wow. the playbook even. Wow. I, I was like, welcome nice. to 2016. <laughs> you, oh, you must you okay. must be deprived of protein since your your tra your travel to the slipstream. It's like, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be rude. I was just fascinated by why he was using a playbook. It's like he had <laughs> how, it. He still he had it. It still playbook. worked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it it was a great piece of equipment. I had one. It worked great. Yep. It had no apps. It was it was funny as hell because that was around the time that uh, Steve Jobs published a personal letter saying, here's why we don't support Flash because Flash will never work on a tablet and here's what will happen if you ever put Flash on a tablet. And then I got my, 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 my uh, review unit of the playbook saying, no, that's not true. That's not true. Oh, it's not doing that either. Battery life is okay. Okay, okay, Steve, you're wrong, 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 wrong. Difference of opinion on number five, but also wrong at six. So, oh, well. Ah uh, well, uh, yeah, BlackBerry users, we are we are not trying to troll you. Let us know uh, if you're still using a BlackBerry, how you use it, what you use it for. Uh, we'd love to hear about it because it does seem like the you know the sales numbers keep going down, and they're making Android phones now. Um, so it's 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 a, and, and and Severin wants to know if he Dark Redeemer's dad it. still uses a BlackBerry. All right, well done, <laughs> Papa Dark Redeemer. <laughs> Uh, well, that is it for this episode of the show. Andy Anatko, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Lovely to be back. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so glad you, you were willing to come and enthusiastic to come. Uh, let folks know where else they can find what you're doing on the internet these days. Uh, the price of admission on Andy Anatko's wild ride is to spell my last name. I'm Anatko on Twitter. I-H-N is in Nancy, A-T is in Tom, K-O. Uh, you can read my blog at anatko.com. Uh, and I know my stuff is hard to find on the Chicago Sun-Times site, but it is there. Uh, just go to suntimes.com. That's why I usually post links to where you can find stuff on the Sun-Times uh, on my Twitter feed and on my blog. Yeah, so get to Twitter, get to all the rest of the good stuff. Uh, Ms. Allison Sheridan, thank you again for hosting me last week and being a co-host today. Where can people find more of what you got going on? Well, the best place is podfeet.com, and you can find me at uh, on Twitter at podfeet, which is slightly easier to spell if you know that it's feet as in the things on the end of your legs. Um, this Friday is 11-year anniversary for the No Silicast, so that's wee! -hee. Congratulations, Yay. that's amazing. That just says I do stuff forever. <laughs> I go to a hairdresser I don't even like, but I've just been always doing it. So <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen or he. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for supporting the show. Uh, we do this because you let us do it. Uh, everybody out there who supports the show, whether it's PayPal, merchandise, just like, like buying mugs, or supporting us on Patreon, uh, you are the guys that are making this happen. If you're not one of them, to fix that right now and go join them. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Uh, we need about one in every hundred or so of you to just give us a buck and we will get Peter Wells to be able to do his international version of DTNS 
every week instead of every other week. So uh, if you've been thinking about giving us support, now's the time. He did a great episode this week on the whole podcasting uh, meeting that the New York Times reported on. He's got great stuff. He's got great guests that we can't get to get up at four in the morning Australian time, but he can get them because he's there in a real time zone with them. Uh, so give us give us a buck, patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 593-2459. Catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv and visit our website at dailytechnewsshow.com. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson and Stuart Chaffe to talk about the history of tech. See you then. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh, my mixer's on its last legs. <laughs> I was trying. Yeah, you got Stuart Chaffee. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Thanks for uh, for putting us in touch. Oh, yeah. You know Stuart, uh, Andy? Uh, no. He's the guy that did the Computer Chronicles back in the 1980s. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was Stuart Shiflet. I was, I, was, I was thinking, is that the same guy? Shiflet. Oh, Shiflet. He's spectacular. Yeah, he's so interesting. Oh, cool. I'm glad he's still around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys are going to cover VR then and now and where he, everyone wants it to go. Awesome. Yeah, he's got a video, Andy, on, on – um, he's got all his stuff on archive.org. And, in fact, he was one of the people who helped get video into archive.org. He's part of who made that happen. And he's got – I was watching his VR video from, like, 1982. And I swear it, what's cool is his, his commentary is exactly completely relevant to today. The thing you're looking at looks old and silly, but his conversation's not silly at all. It's not like, oh, oh, oh look at how silly that is. He's a visionary. He's, oh, he's so interesting. Super. I'll be sure to check it out. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, well, Andy, we stick around and like come up with titles and I edit and chat and jaw and stuff, but uh, don't feel like you, you have to hang around. I know you've, you've done a marathon stretch there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get up and stretch my legs a little bit, but uh, let's do this again sometime. Yeah, please. Thank you I'd so much. To. Thanks again. Cheers. Nice to see you, Andy. Have a great day, everyone. Nice to see you, too. Bye. Allison, on Allison. the other hand, you can't go. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You <laughs> I, I, will, I will add to what you were saying, Allison, about uh, the Indian factory is that um, one reason why for the decline of textile industries in a lot of Central African communities is because the inundation of donated clothing mm. from the mm. West. And that literally crowds out the, the mm. local manufacturing for clothes. And it's one of those things where you think, oh, this is great. We're, we're being beneficent. We're helping out these people. But in kind of a roundabout way, we're also undercutting their local economies because now we're just yeah. flooding the market, uh, devaluing the work that you know the the local craftsmen or, or factories are doing uh, in exchange for you know uh, I guess goodwill. Yeah. Uh, speaking of goodwill titles, goodwill titles. All right, expensive cat videos leads the pack. H two O plus is uh, NA sodium. Uh, plus sodium equals YouTube. Drop boxing like it's hot. It's kind of keeping gross. up with the Chinese Joneses. I like that one. Uh, Facebook only lives in the real world. Facebook promises not to erase the real world. Uh, Facebook reality distortion field. If Python eats an elephant, what kind of scripting was used? <laughs> A little long, but Amazon Video, comma not so fast. Amazon Video, not your grandfather's YouTube. Uh. Is who blocks the ad block ad blockers? Uh, there I was a double blocker one that I saw earlier. Where did that one go? High quality cat video. It's not the cat video we want. It's the cat video we need. Xiaomi is taking it to the max. Uh, Reddit paywall blues. There it is. Uh, Steve, I wrote blocking the ad blocking blockers. I oh, it was pretty concise. Blocking the ad, blo oh, blocking block. I just moved it. Hmm. Maxi out Xiaomi. Who blocks the block? Who blocks the ad blockers? Ad blockers, what it does. So the main subject was the video stuff, right? Yep. Expensive cat videos is pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Expensive cat videos for expensive tastes. It's like, uh, <laughs> is it frisky? What was the cat food that commercial where they put in a little uh, champagne, champagne glass? Thing, yeah. Is that Friskies? Mm -hmm. 
I, you know, I don't think cats really care. I think it just needs to taste good to them. The, a lot of that is just really playing on the ego of the the owner. Oh, I'm pretty sure all of it, right? It's like little dog outfits. It's like dogs don't care. They have fur for a reason. And all right, so, so we're so we're going feet. with so we're go, oh fancy feast, expensive Stores cat menus. Yeah. <laughs> Did I you remember. pick one, Tom? Sorry. Did you pick one? Uh, pick, no. What I, I was expensive cat video yeah, sounds I like. Think, a, I think everyone's agreeing on expensive, expensive cat, cat videos. videos. Excellent. No, I. Uh, I swapped some equipment around. I remember I said I was not see, I that uh, we weren't seeing the, the everything in uh, audio hijack earlier. Yeah. Well, it only recorded my mic. Oh no! So no. I'm ge- I'm I'm getting the backup recording out, which is why I, I almost said, started. "Do you want me to record too?" Because I can no, always I, do that. I actually have a backup recording, okay. so it's fine. But I had to go. It's not the normal procedure. You know, people were saying in the chat room that you sounded muffled. You didn't sound muffled to me, though. But I have crappy headphones on. Well, you, you sound like you did yesterday when you had the issue, so I thought it was just the same. You sounded great at my house, by the way. <laughs> With your setup? Yeah. I, and I guess what I would say is it sounded exactly the same, which I thought was, uh, was good. You can tell I'm proud of my brother and his uh, Invictus Games thing. He's the uh, coach of the wheelchair basketball team for the Wounded Warriors for uh, the Coast Guard and Navy. And oh, then they when it. they go to oh, nice. Invictus, he's for the whole U.S. Huh. Are they, are they uh, pro- proceeding? Have they played? Where, where are uh, they yeah, they're, they're doing really well. He says that they're going to play uh, the Netherlands in the, in the semifinals, but he says the Netherlands will never make it across the center line until they decide to start letting him because they feel sorry for him, and that they'll end up playing Britain in, for, the, uh, for the gold on Thursday. So he thinks they're much better than Netherlands. Yeah, and he's not all bluster. All right. Some bluster. It's just a marginal bluster. I love watching him when he's when he's uh, they televise these games, and I love watching him because since I know him so well, I know what he's screaming when he's going, <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear his words. You know, even though you can't hear That's him. That's funny. He got to meet Prince Harry, so that was cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. The Harry Prince. <clears throat> Prince Henry of Wales, or Prince Harry. I didn't know that. Funny when uh, what's what's his father, Prince Charles, mm-hmm. Prince of Wales. I when I was a kid, I I literally thought it was like the animal Wales. It's like oh, that's kind of cool. It's like Aquaman. <laughs> he is Prince of Wales. He's a he has like Wales will all do my bidding. He has a scepter and a trident, and he's just like you know telling him to do stuff. That's amazing. Fetch me my dinner. I want to be <laughs> Prince of Sea Lions. Whale with a chef's hat pops out. That's like a full, like a full twelve course meal laid out. <laughs> My mother told me that she was like eleven years old when she found out that that uh, feathers didn't grow out of the tops of Indians' heads. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Feather headdress. Just thought they came that way. Yeah, Prince of Wales. Now Roger, that I didn't is a tell you. Peralta drawing, says Big Jim. <laughs> yeah. Roger, I think of you every time I pick up dog poop when I'm walking my dog now because of our conversation. Aww, that's so sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's... I don't know what it is with this particular city, but it's like I know there's a lot of dog owners and a majority of them are very responsible, but, man, it's just like those one or two. Well, it's the spam effect, right? Like, the ninety-eight percent of the dog owners can be perfect, and just two percent will cover the ground. Well, you know that's that goes that that happens like any job. Like, say you work with a a good sized company, and like ninety-five percent of the people are awesome. But it just takes a handful of jerks to really make your your work life a living a living hell because they're just there. Just, uh, it's hard to just, I don't know how the best way to describe it. You know, just one or two can ruin your entire day. I think you could put that sentence on everything in life. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 
they just that just that one bad dinner that just totally totally puts you off eating out for a while. It's like ah, oh, the waste. And especially if it's expensive, then you feel cheated. It's like I spent a lot of money for crap. Or like in like an expensive uh, tech, you know, piece of gear or mm-hmm. article of clothing. Like I bought myself a five hundred dollar jacket. Oh look, it's already tearing at the seams. Why'd you buy that jacket? Because it's cool. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not tearing. It's great. It just doesn't have the same lining as the other one, so it's a little cooler, like temperature-wise. But I just layer it because I'm in San Francisco. I layer things. So I've been looking for somebody to talk to on my show about what journalism really is these days. Maybe Andy is the right person. He seemed to yeah, have yeah, he'd be great. Like, yeah. Uh, passion on the topic oh yeah absolutely and he's been in the business for a good amount of time so when he what he got into there about people copying and pasting and you know because i i get i get people who try to say i'm a journalist and it's like (laughs) journalist what are you talking about Uh, i tried i tried to get ina freed but she was always too busy she'd say she could do it like oh yeah just call me next month i promise never worked yeah and she probably meant it yeah. No, Anina, and she probably just couldn't, you know, she is crazy busy. Yeah, I think I tried right around the time that uh, Recode was getting started. <laughs> yeah. Probably a really good time. I tried to get Kara Swisher. Kara Swisher. Mm-hmm. That didn't go anywhere. She's like, hey, I'd love to, but I'm really busy. <laughs> like, ah, oh, all right. Yeah. I know uh, both of them from going to All Things D all those years, but... Uh, like, like in gen, like journalism in general, or te- tech journalism uh, in particular. Well, my reference is tech journalism, but I, I suppose it could expand well beyond that, right? Because well, I think I think it's Sasha Segan over at PC Mag, but yeah, also, um, who else do I know that is journalisty? Well, oh, what about um, loads of journalists? But like having somebody who can Ooh, you're really, really low. say like I've been. Oh, sorry, I turned myself down. Having somebody who could really say, I, you know, I've been in journalism for forever. I've seen it through all its phases. I went to journalism school. Here's what journalism is. Uh, right. That's, you know that there's a lot of people who could do that. Like, but there's a lot of people who could do it really, really well. Right. And also somebody that I have some sort of relationship with that I that I know a little bit is fun. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Big Jim says Justin Robert Young. Is he a journalist? Yeah, yeah he went he to journalism school. school. Oh, he, he did. At, he worked in newspapers. Interesting. He doesn't have the consistent worked for thirty years thing. Uh, yeah. It'd be the only the only part of my my grand pronouncement there that he wouldn't have. But yeah, he and I both went to journalism school. Yeah, I didn't, even think, I didn't even think of having you on to talk. About. No, don't have me on. I <laughs> I never. I, I, I don't consider this journalism necessarily. Well, that's this is part analysis, of the question, right? Right, it's analysis. Yeah, uh, and and I didn't. You know, I worked at Tech TV. I worked at a campus newspaper. Worked at a radio. I worked at a lot of radio stations. If you want to talk about radio, uh, I've got more experience there. But I'm thinking, yeah. you want to like a newspaper vet, like somebody who's been in the trenches. Well, I, I I think the the main thing I'm looking at is to me a journalist is the person who gets on a plane and flies to Algeria to interview the guy. You know, not well, that's a reporter. Yeah, and that yeah. is the classic. That is the you know purest representation of journalism. There are other things that are still journalism that aren't that, but yeah. Sure, or I mean, a firsthand review of a gadget that you write up a review and post it. I think that that's that's a form of journalism in our tech world. Um, but so much of everything that's out there now is just regurgitation of what's already there, and that's kind of what we're doing here and doing analysis. But a lot of them is it's not analysis; it's just regurgitation, and I yeah. it irritates yeah, yeah. me. No, it's 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 the difference between you know to me what we do is sort of like the op-ed uh, columns, 
You know, we're we're somebody who's taking what's what's been reported and putting it in context, adding information, giving you a chance to understand it better. And there's a yeah. place for that. Right. Uh, then what you're talking about is the people who report, who find out what happened. And what's interesting about technology is it's really not that hard to find out what most things happen because companies tell you and they give you the product. Give you a PR release. Yeah. yeah. What where it becomes different is the rumor mongering, and and. I think in technology it gets out of hand personally, but uh, yes, yeah, Dwight Silverman uh, is Houston Chronicle is another good one. Um, da, 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 da. Tomorrow is set. Should be exciting. All right. I think I actually created a file that is listenable. <laughs> We managed to create a file that was a stereo, uh, it was an interview we did at NAB, and it was stereo mono that was completely out of phase, so if you oh. listen to it in mono, it was no sound at all. Uh -huh. Ah, that's funny. Can't tell that itself out. Yeah. yeah, it was really, that was awesome. That's crazy. <laughs> Everybody's wondering why my show is 11 minutes shorter than you thought it would be, that would be why. Mm -hmm. As things happen. I'm going to have to bominos. Yeah, me too. I have to go to the dentist. Oh. No, it's just a it's regular fine. checkup. Nothing. It's a regular checkup. You always feel like you're going to get a report card, right? I don't anymore. <laughs> I have a really good dentist, and I always feel like I'm getting my teeth in better shape. Because I also like rarely have to have anything done other than just the, the cleaning. Uh, so see, that's the difference between Tom and... Most everyone of, else. Everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I'm, a, I'm at the edge of it every time. I really like my dentist, but I still feel that way. Like when they do the X-ray, it's not like I think they're gonna gonna gouge me. I just feel like, oh, I know I screwed up somewhere, and I'm gonna should have done more. I should have uh, tried harder. You know, it's harder for adults to get cavities as they get older because the enamel hardens. But you run into a host of other issues, you know, regard, you know, related to, you know. Dental hygiene. It's like ah, ah, and it's and it, even for me, it's not even the cost. It's just the time. Oh wow! Sorry, another Jay Martin just uh, in the chat room. Disney Infinity shutting down. What's the publishing? They're the ones who do the um, what you call it? The little. They're basically Disney's version of the Ambio. Yeah, uh, Skylanders. Yes. Oh no, Skylanders is Activision's. It's what is Disney's Disney Infinity is the name of the Skylanders thing. Is it? Skylanders like thing. Yeah, it's anyway. Skylanders, but it's it's Disney's version. It's so it's right. their version of yeah. Skylanders was the first and Disney Infinity was kind of their their attempt at 147 million charge in connection with the shutdown. Yeah, Disney getting out of game development. That's crazy. You know, it well, I be... mean, they're getting out of game development Disney. They're not yeah. getting out of Lucas, though, are they? Well, they're, they're, so but I the... guess they don't really do much there any, anyway. They shuttered so, Lucas Arts, so you're right. Never mind. They're they're slowly shifting all their game production to third parties. Yeah, like they're going to license, but they've been doing that for the past four four or five years. Yeah, like they've been slowly trying to withdraw from it because they want to focus on stuff they can. They, they know they can do well consistently. All right. All right. Uh, well, now that we've got some breaking news in, thanks everybody for watching and hanging in there. Thanks again to Andy Anatko. Thank you, Allison. Bye. We'll see you later.